Hey, what's going on guys? This is Bunny Muffins. Today we have the meta snapshot for patch 11.18b. This is going to be a B patch week because sometimes in the middle of a patch they change things up a little bit and last week they thought that reroll comps were too strong. So in the B patch they nerfed Kha'Zix at 3 star. They nerfed Yasuo across the board but I still feel like he's pretty strong as you guys will see in the tier list. And Vayne, she got nerfed at 2 and 3 star, but I feel like her nerf was a bit unnecessary because I didn't think she was that strong compared to everything else that got nerfed. Uh, but let me know your thoughts on that in the comments. For Assassins, Critical Strike damage is being reduced at 4 and 6 Assassin. I don't really think this affects that much at all because when Nocturne's jumping to your back line with all the other Assassins, it's still going to be like really, really strong. Instead of killing your team in 1 second, it's going to take 1.1 seconds. Obviously, a nerf is still a nerf, but... Um, like they're, they're still going to be smacking pretty hard. Uh, but let's get on to the composition. So in the S tier, it's going to be a little bit weird this week because there are a lot of comps in the S tier. I feel like Abominations is like a slight step above everything else in this tier. And we'll get into why when we go over all the other comps as well as how to play every single one of them for this patch. Aphelios is going to be the next build. Pretty flexible build. Nightbringer Yasuo, despite the nerfs, I still rank them in the S tier. It's just a very go big or go home comp, but it's very very strong if you manage to hit it uh, so strong that i put it in the s tier sentinels this is going to be another like four cost comp in the s tier i feel like since everything else got nerfed this comp got a lot better and people are also experimenting with a lot of different itemizations on lucian which we'll get into in just a bit we are going to go over how to play every single one of these but first a word from our sponsor thanks to our sponsor raid shadow legends it is time to raid. If you're hesitant about getting started, let me show you the top five common champions, which are great starter champions to get you right into the game. So at number five, we have the Bandit, and I like him because he has a nice debuff that lowers the enemy's defenses. At number four, we have the Yeoman, who is pretty much a stat bot with a great multi-attack. After that, we have the Swordsman, which greatly lowers enemies' defenses. And then at number two, we have the Sister Militant, which is really good at AoE attacks. So if you're facing a ton of small health mobs, she is great for clearing those levels really quickly. At number one, I think the Death Hound is the best common champion because he has attacks that ignores defenses. So you don't even need any types of debuffs to get his full damage off. Hopefully this list gets you started because I wish I had known this when I started playing Raid. Lucky for you guys, there's a bunch of new updates in the Doom Tower. First off, there are two new bosses to take on, Astronix the Dark Fey and Bommel the Dreadhorn, and there's also new enemy balance on tower floors, secret rooms to discover, and new artifact sets to win. There's also a new feature called Super Raids, which allow you to double up on rewards from hitting dungeons, which massively speeds up your progress in the game. If you want to get a huge start in Raid, all you have to do is hit the link in the description below or scan my QR code, and you'll get the epic hero Chanaru. 200,000 silver, 1 XP boost, 1 energy refill, and 1 ancient shard so you could summon a new champion as soon as you get into the game. All this treasure will be waiting for you right here and it will only be available for the next 30 days for new players. So in the A tier, these comps are still really good. I feel like a lot of the A tier comps are better at winning games than a lot of the S tier comps. But at the end of the day, climbing ranks in TFT isn't about winning all the time. And a lot of these S tier comps, they get second or third really often. And like, and it's hard to go eighth with these comps compared to some of the ones in the A tier. Uh, so in the A tier, we have Kale Knights. You only go this if you are wind streaking. We also have Assassins, which did get a slight nerf. Forgotten Draven, first time it's in the A tier in set 5.5. Reroll Dawnbringer, still pretty good. And then Skirmishers are going to round that out. In the B tier, Dawnbringer Karma. This one's kind of like in between B and A tier. I feel like it's definitely better than all the other B tier comps. But it is a step below everything else here, so I wasn't quite sure where to put this. Vein reroll, eh, not that great, but if you get it, you get it. Invokers, it's the late game dream, but you can't go it that often. Cavaliers with MF, this one's pretty decent too, but you can only play this if you get the pieces for the comp. Reroll Legionnaire, same story, and then Velkaz. Uh, you might as well do the Abomination one, but if you must go the Redeemed ones, because some games you don't get Abominations, go for the Redeemed Velkaz. And then in the C tier, I typically don't play these comps. We have Riven, Hellion, and Varus rerolls. These comps, like, they're still playable if you really get them for free, but I tend to avoid them. I maybe will play them one out of every, like, 30 or 50 games. Uh, but if you want to play them for fun, go ahead. I'm not saying they can never win or do well, but it's just a lot less often than all the other comps we have listed above them. And in set 5.5, like, pretty much a lot of things are viable. Like, I'm never mad if I go for one of the B tier comps, whereas before, like, I was like, oh, dang, I have to go for this because the game's forcing me to. And you're a little disappointed 
and you just kind of like are praying for a top four. But I feel like all the comps S, A, and B all have like a fighting chance in this set, which is like something that can't be said for a lot of the previous ones. Now we are going to go over the S tier comps. So Abomination, Heimerdinger, or Velkaz. Again, this is going to be one of the best comps. And the reason behind that is because you have a lot of different carry options. You might look at some other tier lists. You'll see Heimer, Velkaz, and Zyra carry with the Abominations all ranked like pretty decently. And that's why this comp is going to be the best comp because they have a lot of different carry options and whenever you're playing tft you're hoping for two things good items and good units and when you have a lot of different options for good units well that takes care of half of the rng in the game not actually but like you can think of it that way uh, so then after that you just need to worry about items but the abomination can use so many different items the only specific ones you need are the mana and damage items as you guys see in these pictures here uh, but even then, they could use a bunch of different stuff as long as they have at least some AP and some mana regeneration. For this build, you will want to do what's called a standard leveling, which is just playing kind of normally. And to do that, you roll at either 6, 7, or 8. And at each of these rolling stages, you don't have to roll all of your gold, and it depends a lot from game to game. But you pretty much just want to keep track of your HP and your bench. So if you have a lot of pairs on your bench and you're low health, you might want to roll at even level 6. If you're trying to stabilize at 4-1, obviously roll at level 7 at that point. And if you're doing like a fast 8, go ahead and do that at either 4-2 or 4-5 uh, in order to hit most of the 4 cost units. Because again, if you're going Velkos carry... Like, he's a 4 cost, level 8's the easiest level to hit him on. So you might be wondering, like, when do I go which of these units? So typically, you're going to be going Velkos most of the time. He's going to be the default mid to late game carry. If you want to go, like, super late game and you have the health to do it, a uh, Heimerdinger 2 star definitely going to be better than Velkos. And then if you get, like, a Draconic start with the A-bombs, that's the only time you really go for Zyra. Onto the next build, we have Aphelios, and something it shares in common with the Velkaz build is that, again, you have a lot of different options in terms of the units you use. You could go for 6 Nightbringer, 4 Nightbringer, and 2 Nightbringer. We have the 4 Nightbringer version up here, but again, it depends on what you're hitting during that game. As for items, we have like 5 different items listed out here for Aphelios, and there are even more that he can use. They're just like slightly worse than what you see out of these choices. Doesn't mean they're bad, it just means that I prefer whatever I listed here a little more. Another great thing about this comp is that right now, Aphelios shares a lot of items with other carries. So let's say you're going for the Nightbringer build with Aphelios, but you don't hit him, but you hit a Draven 2 instead. They pretty much use a lot of the same items. They like attack damage and they like attack speed. Same with Lucian. He likes attack damage and he also likes attack speed. So when you are playing this, you essentially have a lot of different pivots you can go for if as long as you know the builds and we'll get into all of those in just a bit. If you guys are looking at the comp, you might notice a lot of four cost units. So that means you want to do again, standard leveling with rolling most of your gold on either level seven or eight. But in emergencies, you do need to be rolling at level six a little bit to stabilize. Um, but ideally you fast eight and roll like 30 to 50 gold depending on what your health is in order to get all the four cost units. Next comp we have is a Nightbringer Yasuo. This is the oddball out in the S tier because this is a reroll comp and it's not very flexible. You could go four or six Nightbringers. That's about the only difference you can do. I have seen some people try like six Legionnaires with the Yasuo, but the Nightbringers are definitely better because the shield you get is just way too good, especially after the Volibear nerf. Uh, Volibear no longer removes shields, he just does bonus damage to them, and Nightbringers give a big shield, so it's no surprise that they are so strong right now. So, items for Yasuo, mandatory ones are the RFC and the Runons. Third item can either be Hand of Justice or Jeweled Gauntlet, doesn't really matter which. In this version, we have four Nightbringer and three Ironclad. I typically go this if I'm facing a lot of attack damage carries, which is the majority of the meta right now. If that is not the case, go for the 6 Nightbringer version because that is going to add even more damage to your Yasuo. Uh, for this build, you want to do a slow roll at level 7 because Yasuo is a 3 cost unit and level 7 gives the best odds for that while also giving you the most gold to do this with. Next build we have are the Sentinels. So Sentinels, uh, they've been in and out a bit but like everything else got nerfed so that's why they are slightly higher now. Um, again, what's great about this build is that Lucian can use almost any item in the game. He can use ability power items such as Jeweled Gauntlet, he could use Static Shiv, he could use all the attack damage items, he could even use Titan's Resolve really, really well. I actually really like building like Titan's Resolve and Static Shiv on him. And again, based on the question we asked before, everything you need in TFT is both items and champions. So if you aren't really item dependent on anything, like champions are the only things you need to worry about, and it just removes one aspect of the game that you need to be anxious about. Uh, your main tank is going to be Galio. He's going to have like the typical tank items, Warmogs, 
Bramble Vest, Dragon Claw, Stone Plate, Sunfire. All those five items are probably the best items in the game right now because they belong in every single composition because every single composition runs tanks and there are only so many tank items you can build. In this build right now, you see it's a six sentinel version with like a couple of ironclad. There's also like a three ironclad version by adding in Jax and there's even a skirmisher version by adding in Viego as well. If you do go for that, you definitely want to be running Aurelia over Akshan because that gives you a free skirmisher. And you can use Jax or Viego as a secondary carry depending on what items that you have. Uh, for this build, you want to do standard leveling, of course, because you're going for a four cost carry. And I do add some more items you can build in the description on the website, which you could access at bunnymuffins.lol slash meta. Um, onto the A tier, we have the Kale Knights. Again, some of the A tier comps are going to be better at winning games than the S tier comps, but TFT isn't about winning every single game. It's just about doing as well as you can based on the cards you are given. Um, and Kale Knights, it's definitely one of those where you can win a lot of games, but you don't really get this comp off that often because you need a lot of health to play this because you need to hit Kale. And then you want items such as Gwinsu's Rage Blade and the Death Blade. And in the Assassin meta right now, it's a little weird playing her. A lot of people are playing Kha'Zix Reroll and the Nocturne builds. And to counteract that, I like building a Guardian Angel because whenever you want to counter Assassins as an attack damage carry, Guardian Angel is going to be your item of choice because they're going to jump to the back, kill them, de-aggro, and then they're going to go off after that. Guardian Angel also works great on Kale because it buys a lot of time for her to ascend. After that, your main tanks are going to be Galio and Garen, whoever you have two-starred. Obviously, if they're both two-star and I have an item remover, I'd prefer it on Garen, but most of the games, you just want to put it on Galio because he's going to be pretty easy to two-star. You're actually lucky if you even get a Garen one-star. To play this build, you're doing standard leveling and you're going for like a different carry such as Aphelios. And then if you happen to hit a Kale, go ahead and go for this. After that, the next build are the Assassins. Uh, this comp did get nerfed a little bit, but it really doesn't matter because Nocturne's still going to be smacking everyone in the back line. You just need literally any attack damage or attack speed item. The only item I prefer over everything else is the Runon's Hurricane because it allows him to hit more targets. But really anything would do. A 6 Assassin, 4 Revenant with the Assassin Spatula on Fiddlesticks, and then Zeke's Herald plus Trap Claw. Gonna be no-brainers there because you just want to support your Nocturne. Uh, to play this build, similar to the Yasuo build, you want to do a reroll on level 7 for Nocturne 3. And that is going to be pretty much it for this comp. It's pretty easy to play. Next build we have is the Forgotten Draven comp. And this is the first time that Draven is in the A tier in set 5.5. Um, I feel like this build right now with the 4 Forgotten is the best version. We also have 3 Ironclad here if you're facing a lot of uh, attack damage comps. And this build is a little interesting because we have a lot of secondary carries. I have all the items on Draven. The only ones I think are mandatory are Bloodthirster and Last Whisper. Third item, just any damage item will do. For the secondary carry, I either do Jax or Viego. Jax, if you are going to use him... You kind of want a Bloodthirster because he's a melee carry, so he's going to be taking a lot of damage, and it kind of makes the Bloodthirster required. After that, Viego, if you have ability power items, it's going to be great on him. Main tank is going to be Hecarim. Uh, just because he has the Forgotten buff, it makes him like super, super tanky. For this build, you want to do standard leveling because, again, we're doing a four cost carry here. There are also a bunch of other builds you can try, such as the Six Forgotten or the Four Knights build. And in case you guys are new and have already forgotten, don't forget to subscribe down below if you are new to the channel and enjoy TFT content. Onto the next build, we have the Dawnbringer reroll Kha'Zix and Gragas build. This is known as the Chug Jug build or the Chug Bug build uh, because Gragas drinks from a jug and Kha'Zix is a bug. So um, that's why it's called that if you guys have heard that from other people. To play this build, 6 or 4 Dawnbringer is going to work great for you. The only thing I feel like is required is the IE and Handed Justice on Kha'Zix because those are by far the best damage items on him. Uh, after that, RFC, probably the best third item. Some people like GA, but I prefer the RFC. Gragas, just any generic tank items will do. Uh, and you just throw him in the front line in order to get the most out of his stone plate. Um, but pretty much every other unit in this comp is just complementary. They really don't matter other than for the synergies. To play this build, we are going to do a reroll at level 5 for Kha'Zix and Gragas 3. You could also do a hyper roll at level 4 if you have a lot of copies of Kha'Zix. For example, if you have 7 Kha'Zixes at stage 3-1, which is right after the Krugs, go ahead and just roll down till you hit Kha'Zix 3. If not, if let's say you only have 5 Kha'Zixes, you might want to do a slow roll, which is just rolling down to level 50 every single turn at level 5 after you hit it naturally on stage 3-2. 
If any of this didn't make sense, go ahead and ask a question down below or join the Discord at discord.gg slash bunnymuffins and ask there because we have a lot of people who are willing to help out new players, especially in the coaching section. So do check that out as that channel did get a small revamp recently. So on to the next build, we have Skirmisher Knights. This build has always been on like the cusp of greatness, but doesn't get there. Um, which is a little weird. It's still at that point, but like it's still a decent build. But whenever you're running like a melee carry, uh, the game's always a little bit funky because he he just dies in a lot of fights randomly. But he's still pretty good. Like let's say you get a Jax 2 and you get good items for him, like you kind of have to play him, right? You also have a great secondary carry in Viego, and this comp is also super tanky. So a lot of the assassin builds, they often attack your backline instead of your jacks, and that gives them time to aggro on the right person and kind of take them down there. One fun thing to do, and I forgot to mention this in the Draven build, is if you ever get a Radiant Frozen Heart, drop it on Viego because it is like by far the best unit plus Radiant item combo in the game. Uh, he just jumps to the enemy team. He uses his ultimate right away because because the Radiant version of Frozen Heart gives him extra mana. And he also slows the attack speed of everyone around him. So like, especially at two star Viego, it's almost unstoppable in a lot of games. I don't know if you guys have seen this combo before, uh, but to play this build, standard love link, you're going for a four cost carry. So no surprises there. But now onto the B tier. These comps aren't as good as everything else we just mentioned. Uh, I'd say Dawnbringer Karma is actually like in between B and A tier, but again, the game's pretty balanced right now, so I'm never like mad if I'm going for a B tier comp. I just prefer to go for the other sub because they're more reliant or they are slightly stronger. Uh, so in this build, you want a mana item for Karma, Blue Buff, or Shojin, doesn't really matter which, and then Hat is going to be the best ability power item for Karma right now. Uh, after that, third item, you could do more damage, such as a Jeweled Gauntlet, or add in like utility items or like semi damage items, such as like a Handed Justice. After that, Garen's gonna be your main frontliner. Obviously, Warmog's gonna be the best tank item on him because like he gets a percent shield based on his max health. And pretty much, you're gonna be running either four or six Dawnbringer, doesn't really matter which. Uh, and again, standard leveling because you're going for Karma. There also is a reroll version for Nidalee and Riven 3 star, which we'll get into later. Next build we have is Vayne. This did get nerfed a little bit, but this build has a couple of different options. This one is the three ironclad version if you're facing a lot of attack damage carries, uh, but you could also go six forgotten. That one's pretty good on Vayne too. The only thing you need for this build is Runon's Hurricane and Rageblade. If you don't have those, uh, like it doesn't matter if you have a Vayne three, you're not going to go very far in life in this game, uh, but yeah, you just, <laughs> you just need the Runons and the Rageblade. Runons is so she attacks two different targets. Rageblade, so she gets a lot of attack speed. Third item, I'd say doesn't really matter. You could go for like Jeweled Gauntlet. You could also go for Handed Justice. Uh, third item is just like the flex item, if you want to put it that way. Uh, for the support items, Ash is very important with the Trap Claw and the Zeke's Herald because you need to buff Vayne as much as possible. Literally, all the other units, they don't really matter too much. Hecarim matters a little bit, but that's just to buy time for your Vayne. I often find that Hecarim doesn't do that much in this build compared to like the Cavalier build, which we'll get into in just a bit. But to play this comp, you do a reroll similar to the Gragas and Kha'Zix build. Uh, you want to do that at level 5 or level 4, depending on how many copies of Vayne that you have. Next build we have is Invokers. This is like one of the best late game comps. Look at the build. Like everything's expensive except for Syndra. So uh, you're going to be winning a lot of games if you get this comp. The only issue is that you aren't going to be able to get this that often because you need a ton of health in order to play this comp. Like a lot of times you want Teemo 2 star and that costs 18 health. And you also need to get to level 9 to hit all the legendary units. So uh, a lot of variables to this build. But if you hit it, you're going to be winning a lot of games. But you don't play this that often. Uh, but it's good enough to be in the B tier. Standard leveling, you typically play this if you're going for a Velkaz or a Karma build, because look at the items. Mana item, ability power items. That's pretty much what Velkaz and Karma use. So if you are playing those and you have a lot of health and a lot of gold, definitely do consider transitioning into Invokers, because that's what I would typically do, because in those games, you want to try to maximize your chances of getting first place as much as possible, and Invokers is one way to do that. Next build we have is the Cavalier comp. Uh, Hecarim is unkillable in this comp because he has a Cavalier buff at 3 instead of just 2. And you also focus more of your items onto him. So in the Vayne build, you want to focus more on your Vayne items, but in this build, you focus more on your Hecarim items. Uh, so to do this, you want to reroll at level 6 to get all the 2 stars. Hecarim, Sejuani, and Thresh, all fine and dandy. If you get Nautilus, I guess use him, but he's really not that important. After you get at least Hecarim to 3 star, you want to level up to level 7, reroll for Misfortune. 3 star as well. 
And items for her, Shojin is by far like the best item on MF because you need her to cast and that's the way to do that. Best damage item is going to be Jeweled Gauntlet. And then third item, I like Hand of Justice, but obviously any ability power items will do. Pretty easy comp to play or pretty straightforward because uh, all the units are pretty static. After that, we have Reroll Legionnaire. This is one of the few reroll builds that didn't get touched. And that kind of nerfs it indirectly because fewer people will be going for Kha'Zix or Vayne, for example, because they got nerfed, which means it's harder to hit Aatrox and Callista 3-star. The difference between Reroll Legionnaire and all the other reroll comps is that this comp is mainly an early game comp. So like Vayne can kind of compete in the late game, but this comp is amazing in the early game. You will be like win streaking the entirety of like stage two, three, four, and parts of stage five. But there is a point where Aatrox just isn't tanky anymore and he just dies to everything, which is a little unfortunate, right? A lot of late game carries can deal with Aatrox, but a lot of early game carries cannot. And once you hit that threshold, you kind of need to pivot into something else or just accept like a top four, which is why I don't really like this build that much. You typically just use this to win streak and then go into something else. That is, unless you do find a secondary carry that you can itemize and kind of use there. Um, but overall, decent build if you get it, but I find myself not going for this that often. Last build in the B tier we have is the Belkaz comp, and this is with Redeemed. Again, if you're going for Abomination Belkaz and you don't hit the Abomination, this is another option you can use if you have ability power items and you have the Belkaz. Um, so that's one option there. Uh, there's really no other reason to play this comp other than as a backup plan. Uh, now onto the C tier, I typically don't play these, but again, doesn't mean they can't win, doesn't mean that they are unplayable, it's just that all the other comps are much better, so there isn't too much reason to play this unless you get like four Rivens in a shop, for example, and you already have a Riven 2 star. Like It's like weird situations like that, because um, you also need the items for them, and you don't want to build something like an RFC unless you know you're going to use it, so it's a little bit of a weird spot like that. Um, but yeah, pretty standard reroll build here. You go for Riven and Nidalee 3 star. Next build, Hellion reroll. Tristana either kills everything or she gets killed before she does anything. So she's always going to be in a delicate spot because of that. Like you could probably change her numbers by like one attack damage or one HP at a time and it'll make a huge difference. But don't really play this comp because it's just really weak right now. Now that we are done with the comps, let's move on to the items. So items right now, I changed this up a little bit from last week. Defensive items are going to be the way to go because defense, they just belong in every single composition. Every single comp uses defensive items. So belt, chain, negatron, all not bad. I know I have negatron ranked last right now, but that's just because like the game's pretty balanced and you never feel like that bad if you get a negatron. Obviously, I'd prefer something else, but hey, you can't always get what you want. Uh, for damage items, I like bow and sword more than the tier and rod, and the reason behind that is because there are more attack damage comps right now. With the rod, you're really only going for Velkaz. With the bow and the sword, there's like Draven, there's Lucian, there's Aphelios, just a lot more items there, and bow can be used for like RFC and stuff like that. So that's why I do prefer those over the ability power ones. Glove right now is also pretty good because you can build stuff like Handed Justice, it belongs in every composition. Jeweled Gauntlet's pretty important. And Last Whisper is very usable in a lot of different comps as well. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the item quadrant. So a lot of people have been asking me for a Radiant tier list. The reason why I haven't done one is because it doesn't really help people that much. Let's say that like, so let's just say that Radiant Bramble Vest is the best item. It isn't, but let's just pretend it is. A lot of times you're not even going to see Radiant Bramble Vest in your armory. And even if you do, if you already have three tank items, just because it's rated the best item doesn't mean you should take it. Uh, whenever you get to the Radiant Armory, you just need to analyze your team and see what you need. If you need damage items, go for a damage item. If you need tank items, go for a tank item. If none of the options work for you, go for something like a utility item, such as Shroud of Stillness, Trap Claw, or Zephyr. You really just have to look at what you have and see what you need. Uh, it's really like... That's really the only way to explain it. So that's why I don't make a tier list because they don't really help because you just get a choice of five every single time. So even if I knew what your choice of five was and I ranked them accordingly, it still doesn't matter because you still need to look at your team to judge which one to pick. Um, and that's the same in general with like pretty much every item. So if you are curious on what items to go for, like I list them all out here. Like for example, in the Riven build, I list out like five items you could choose from. Uh, obviously more work than what I list here, but these are the ones that I find work the best for me. But that is the approach you should be taking with items. So just to sum up this week, again, there was a B patch. 
Uh, a lot of the rerolls got nerfed a little bit. And then for the tier list, we have in the S tier, Abomination's best comp, very flexible in terms of your carry. Aphelios, flexible in that you can transition to the other attack damage comps, or also change around and play around with 6, 4, and 2 Nightbringer. Nightbringer Yasuo, just straight out really good for high risk, high reward. Sentinels, pretty flexible in terms of the items because Lucian can use all sorts of weird items such as Static Shiv and Titan's Resolve along with all the typical attack damage and attack speed items. And also adding in the Jeweled Gauntlet doesn't hurt him either. Uh, in the A tier, like Kale Knight's very good for winning but just hard to hit. Same for Assassins. Draven's reliable. Dawnbringer's high risk, high reward. Skirmishers, reliable. Uh, B tier, Karma probably is the best one. And then Vayne Reroll, Invokers, Cavalier, and the Reroll Legionnaires, all situational because you just need the units to play the comp. There's not really too much to it there. Uh, Redeem Velkaz is going to round everything out, but again, if you're playing Velkaz, Ab Abomination version is going to be a little bit better. And then C tier, like, doesn't mean they can't win, but it just means that they're less consistent or weaker than everything else up here. If you guys did enjoy this, don't forget to hit the like button down below and also subscribe if you have not already and check out all my links below. I have a Twitter, Instagram, and a bunch of other stuff as well. Um, but that is going to be it from me. I will see you all next time. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to share and subscribe. And of course, smash that like button. Each like is an LP I gained before the next video.